Greetings, nerds. This is Santa Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. I don't know what's more surprising than I actually watched the Captain America 4 trailer or that I watched a movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with the Captain America 4 trailer, then let's... Actually, I'm curious about what movie you watched. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so again, and actually, more surprisingly, it's a movie that came out this year. <laughs> oh, it's a twister. <laughs> and it wasn't on the streaming. I just saw that Amazon had it, like, at a very discounted rate to buy. So I'm like, okay. Um, it was Challengers. Because that oh, yeah. was the other movie that I had. Huh. Like, oh, I'm, I'm curious about that. Um, so I watched it again Sunday afternoon in between the boys and uh, House of the Dragon. So my my expectations were, ha- had been lowered because my, one of my brothers had seen the movie and told me some stuff about it mm-hmm. that um, some critiques he had. So I I guess I was not as caught off guard as if I had not known how some of the ADR and the sound editing and mixing was was pretty mm-hmm. bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds like Copa like, the other night with and, the... Uh... And here's, here's the thing. I yeah. had subtitles on, but okay. the subtitles were not even helping me figure out what they were talking about in some of these scenes. And it, it was interesting because I'm curious if this movie was shot in order. Mm-hmm. I mean, technically it couldn't... It, like it Because the sound, it got better as it went on it was there were some beginning scenes where you're just like i have no idea what they're what they just said it sounds like they're whispering (laughs) i don't know why (laughs) oh gosh yeah yeah it's like tenant level um where you're just like what is happening but overall the movie is good i i think people hyped it up a bit much Mm. um i don't think i don't know how zendaya will ever not top like will ever top her performance in euphoria Mm -hmm. like that is such an iconic and especially season two there's a full episode like that i even watched and i said well she's gonna get another emmy (laughs) because i hate for her to have done that and go through withdrawal in that way and showcase that is just crazy so I don't know really why a lot of critics were raving about her performance. I mean, the character was definitely written in a certain way. I don't know. I don't necessarily agree that she brought anything to it. Mm. Um, and and keep in mind, she's why I wanted to watch it. Like right, I, right. I really respect her as an actress, um, and I'm always curious about what she does and the choices she makes. Um, her her. Um, her boys, if we shall say, um, I believe it's, it, forgive me if I'm wrong, I want to say it's Josh O'Connor from The Crown season four, yep. who played, yeah, it's Josh O'Connor and Mike Feast. Um, okay. Both of them are really good. Um, and and I think th- it was more of a showcase of them and what they could do because I mean, outside of maybe one or two roles, neither of them have had much of a not been seen too much. So, mm-hmm. so it was good. Um, but overall, yeah, I'm also glad I didn't go to the theaters because okay. that's definitely a Sunday afternoon pop it on movie. And and yeah, there's sex and it's a sexy movie, kind of, sort of. It's about mm-hmm. tennis. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, very appropriate. You watched it the, the day of the Wimbledon final. <laughs> well, you know, I I try. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I don't even try, and it just works out that way. <laughs> but like, that's another thing that I had. I I wish they would have given me more explanation about some of the rhetoric because mm-hmm. I've never played tennis. I've mm-hmm. never really even watched tennis, so right. I had no idea what was going on in terms of point, match, set, break. Uh, yeah. I'm like, how long is a tennis match? Because this is going it, it on in go, two days. It, it go, it can go long, especially yeah, especially, yeah, it can go long for sure. <laughs> yeah, a few days long, because no, 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 no okay, not a few days. Well, no, but it, 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 it can go, it can go for, it can go for a few hours. Yeah. 
yeah yeah anyway so so i watched that and i think that's i did the captain america 4 come out on sunday as well uh it dropped friday friday okay well whenever it dropped for some reason i clicked on it and i watched it and then yesterday i watched kind of funny do their reaction okay um and yeah yeah it's a good trailer Hmm. um i i find it funny that it's being released on february 14th (laughs) i know i know well i i kind of joked when i saw the release date and i didn't put i didn't put it together before but i was like oh it's black history month (laughs) so yeah there's uh, that too (laughs) yeah yeah i was like we got black captain america we got black cap yeah we have like black history month oh that's yeah but uh convenient reshoots you know we of course you know we did see uh john carlo uh esposito uh in in this which i was like man that's that's a quick turnaround because they they just did his reshoot they just did the reshoots like what uh, a few weeks ago so that's like guardians of the galaxy comic-con level of uh (laughs) of uh you know putting out a trailer after they've done done some reshoots but yeah i i like the trailer too definitely got uh Felt it, it, it felt like the old comfortable MCU that I that we all have grown to love that that's been missing in phases four and five so far, uh, oh, and of course, huh? Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say yeah. I mean, and, and, and yeah, and of course, some of the reactors out there. And I don't know if kind of funny did, but you know, folks were already starting to draw the uh, Winter Soldier comparisons to it as far as some of the vibe for it and stuff but um yeah i just i just i really enjoyed it love the uh, i i you know i'm glad they like went ahead and sort of te- put out there the uh the the cast you know, obviously since bill hurt passed away and you know, harrison ford stepping in for for ross uh you know that, that was a good way they just sort of worked it in with the mustache line there in the trailer and uh and the visuals and stuff and, and of course the pay off of the eternals that we've been like wondering where where is timutu nobody this has time? been wondering that nobody uh, has been wondering that about oh yes they have oh yeah every rea- every reactor you watch on like youtube they're like all wondering like that you know but well, they those always are the reactors i watch on youtube because <laughs> like who the because and 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 i saw you tweeted that and i'm like will you didn't like that movie <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's always been that little hanging thing that's been out there. It's just like, oh yeah, we're just gonna we're, we're just gonna have this thing sitting in the ocean and nobody's gonna talk about it. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> um, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I definitely don't watch those reactors. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's Roka. I mean, come on, you watch Roka. I but not not for this. Yeah. I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, why are you bringing up? <laughs> <laughs> the geek buddies i mean you know I, well this is one i mean i, I think christian and a couple other people have mentioned it too but uh yeah but really the first place i actually saw it was the, the tweet that i like retweeted from our show account but um uh, but yeah <laughs> cool all right uh so house of the dragon um season two episode five regent amid whispers of bad omens the greens consider how to fill a void in aegon's council jacera sets out on a rogue mission to strike a deal damon enlists lord william becca would to help persuade the brackens to bend the knee um i actually want to start with damon anyway okay. Okay. because the dude just had a vision that he fucked his mom yeah. <laughs> you know and yeah. And I think that whole sequence was done really well because mm-hmm. I just, I mean, to prove your point, kind of watch both Christian and Ro- Roka watch <laughs> the whole <laughs> episode. Yeah. And um, both of them had different, like the way they played the scene, every viewer is running through their mind. Who is this? Who is mm-hmm. this girl? Like, mm-hmm. And and they had some opinions, like, is that um, Emma, who was Viserys' wife? Mm-hmm. Is that, who? who is that? Nobody guesses yeah. his mom. That's, and, it, actually, I thought that, to be honest, I thought that was, my, my first reaction was watching the scene real time was like, is he, like, hooking up with Viserys' wife? That was my reaction. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say the mom. No, um, no, 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 no. I, never, my, I didn't see that I, coming. <clears throat> I was wondering if it was uh, like a, a an age of 
Rhaenyra that we haven't seen yet, because so mm. far the only visions have been of Rhaenyra. Mm, that's good. Yeah. And so I thought it was like her in her twenties, because mm. well, her early twenties, late teens, because I feel like there's a there's a there's pretty much a period of time that we didn't really see. Yeah. Um, Rhaenyra grow up. So. Yeah. So that very well, but no, it turned out to be the mom his, um, who I believe in season one mentions that he killed his mom during childbirth. She, I think it was, I think she was, he was three when she died. I think I heard of West Road Seas or something. I, I feel like, I feel like he, he killed. Are you, that might you might be right. I, you know, it's been a long time. I have to, I have to double check. Uh, yeah, and yeah. and I feel like that's why there's blood and there's something else going on um, about like to have all of these visions of Renera and then suddenly be slapped with a mom he never really knew, mm-hmm. and and there's blood on his hands potentially from from his mom, and now. Yeah. There's all of this political drama and like, do do women in his life die at, at his own hands? I mean, technically, his late wife died of her own will. <laughs> She's yeah. like, I'm going out on my terms. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but he still he didn't have to impregnate her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there, there is a recur- you're right. There is a recurring theme with Damon and and losing what significant women in his life. Um, and, and he's under- not really helping Renera right now. Like no. he's making the war harder, and she either wins this or she dies. Like there is no yeah. alternative at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I when I when I think of Damon, I, I was just like, I, I, I've just basically become a new subcategory in my notes of just team Damon. And we're watching game of game of Thrones house of the haunting of Damon, because that's what Aaron Hall has, has really become, uh, you know, with, and I, you know, and it, it, to your point about the blood on his hands and not only his, the women in his life, but also just, just literally what, what he the actions that he has undertaken many times, to- several times in this series. And most recently this season with, Again, the hands-off killing <laughs> of of the you know of his, of Jeff Harris, and then of course the uh, the people in the Riverlands uh, with the Brackens, and, you know, and so we have war, obviously war criminal criminal Damon who uh, who who in both situations he just like look the crown you know we can't put the, we can't have the queen's hands on this, but at the same time you know what you got to do. So um, you know, he doesn't so, say queen. He says right. the crown. The crown, yeah. Well, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, but we can't have the, the crown's fingerprints on this. And 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 to that point, with you know, we keep seeing these visions of blood on his hands, whether it's his mother, you know, when he had the visions in the um, in his sleep um, in Heron Hall in the bed there. Right. And I know the I know the, the the I guess the wood that the the, the, that the castle and the chambers and stuff is made out of, you know, has some magical properties too that 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 feed into that. So, um, you know, so with with all these visions that he's having, uh, that's why I call it the, the the haunting of game. You know, it feels like his own little separate show at this point, where it's just like we're just dealing with Damon and his quest r- removed from the from the larger story. Right. Right. He um, and they're starting repairs and restoration on Heron Hall um, amid all of this continued crowns lands like like there's too many lands. OK, I'm just going to throw that out there because all we keep we keep hearing how Sir Christian has conquered the crown lands. But then I also hear things about the river lands and I'm like. What 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 land is where who what this is why the opening sequence of Game of Thrones worked because it was a map <laughs> and I'm very disoriented right now on the map as to where is what especially yeah. when when <laughs> <I> don't <laughs> dig, know how, dig out the dig out the map from Game of Thrones <laughs> yeah I don't know how how far um what was it uh the last place that they fought at Albert's uh, Rest. Brooks Rest is from King's Landing, but 
I felt like it took a few episodes for them to get there, and then suddenly within an episode they're back. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. And I think Chris Dress was pretty close, if I recall, compared to to Her- Yeah, uh, yeah. I just I need a map. But yeah. so that is what's going on with yeah. um, Damon. Yeah. yeah. One last thing with the Damon, also just the the Lord the 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 Brackens in particular. I don't, I really wanted to you know note how. In addition, you know, we, we, we guess again, more follow up from the, the proxy war that was going on, you know, that the Brackens and the Blackwoods have their thing. And, you know, they really look at the Targaryens at this point as interlopers. And I just love that scene where, you know, Damon's there with uh, Caraxes and, you know, talking and, and, and the Brackens just like, you know, have no Fs to give. He's just like. Yeah, you can you can say all this stuff you want, but we ain't backing down. And then whenever they're walking away, and and just how they immediately cut to that next scene, I couldn't help but think like, holy grail, <laughs> of like whenever Arthur was like sitting, uh, whenever he was trying to recruit knights for the round table in Mind and Python and Holy Grail, when Damon's sitting on that rock, it just had that kind of vibe to it. And it's how defeated Damon looked. He's like, I just yeah. It, you know, he, he's here to do a job, but he can't kill them because he needs these people. But at the same time, he's just like they have utterly stood up to him and he's just like at wit's end as far as what to do. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's also losing his mind. Yeah, that, um, there's that little thing. Yeah. So uh, also on Team Black, we got Corliss, who's going through grief right now of his late wife. Um, and then, you know, just when you think Corliss has no woman to put him in his place, his granddaughter does. <laughs> <laughs> and is like, you shall be the hand. <laughs> and I shall not be your, <laughs> your be heir. Nope. <laughs> I'm a, I'm yeah. a fire of blood. <laughs> um, but she also, it, she, when she, when she says that. <laughs> well, earlier she talks about her mom and how her mom went out by fire mm-hmm. and that's how she wants to die. And I immediately thought like, well, back up a second. <laughs> so you're telling me all Targaryens are suicidal? <laughs> like all y'all yeah. are suicidal? Because, well, and, and I found it very interesting just because like, I, I'm seeing the Targaryen in these characters, um, even the High Towers, come out more and more just because, like, Aegon did a stupid thing and he got burned for it, literally. But at the same time, it's exactly what Renera wanted to do this entire episode. Like, they don't like other people. They, they want to take action. They're not people of politics or anything. Um, they are much more people of 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 action. And so it's really hard to sit on the sidelines, especially when your side keeps losing people and you're you're like, I, I thought Renera's um, why she wanted to go made a lot more sense and was much more compelling than why Aegon wanted to go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that really, that really was um, you know, driven home even more so in this episode and, and just sort of her, her rationale and reasons for, for doing that. And, you know, and, and, you know, and she sits there with Bela and, you know, talking about not only she's, whenever she was trying to, you know, can use her to, go to Corliss to convince him to be the hand and, and to your point too is you know not only her, you know, her mother but also her grandmother you know going out in a blaze of glory like that too um I think Renera um even though rationally she knows that it's not prudent for her to be the leader going out on the front line but she does want she she, she wants it because you know just sitting on the sidelines hearing these old guys sit around and be condescending to her or about being a little lady who can't go fight you know there, there's there's that aspect of it um but also like you said it's just that wanting to be there, there it's that action and, and want to like get their hands dirty and and, and and do this thing 
Yeah, and it's I don't think it's just about the clear sexism that occurs on her council, but I find it interesting that she Renera has only ever received honest and good advice from other women because mm-hmm. and she had that in Renice a lot. Mm-hmm. And now that Renice is gone, you see her have that encounter with her small council who's made up of men. And and then she she had a very good comeback to their whole point about the gentler sex, which is like, yeah, yeah, she may be a gentler sex, but she's definitely a smarter one because point Renera. And then she goes and talks to the white worm and who who I I've been like mixed on this whole storyline, but finally in this episode, I really start to understand why it's important that she's there and for Renera to be able to get some wisdom and guidance from her, especially be able to communicate what's happening over at King's Landing. Yeah. yeah. So with the people and, and, and it, like, that's something I really appreciate how, you by the point that scene occurs you've already been shown enough of king's landing to for for you in your mind being like yeah this is good advice she is spot on you're not you're not thinking like i don't remember seeing any of that no no uh white worm was exactly right yeah that that yeah that's one of the things i knew when i messaged you sunday night whenever we were uh, just giving my initial uh, initial spot reaction to it was I think I even I noted how they're pulling all these threads together that we saw earlier in the season uh, with with the families um, and the small folk in, in, in King's Landing. And, yeah, there was definitely payoff with, with that. And, just, and you're right. I mean, she, Sarah, the white worm, definitely sort of like the uh, unofficial, the, un, the her and Bela are the unofficial counsel. But they have been given her spot on advice to to fill that that gap now that Renice is no longer with them. And and I love that idea that you know there's more than one way to prosecute a war. You don't you know if we're short men, let's use the situation there in King's Landing, especially you know uh, what we see Eamon does when he when and then we'll get into further into Team Green here in a, shortly. But uh, how how he's made a, a bad situation worse with his actions. Right, right. Yeah, I the the use of war, <laughs> that word in this episode, um, it kept being brought up. Um, and because it's a war between dragons, and that was made perfectly clear by the events at Brooks Brooks Rest. And just how yeah men can go in the battle like sir christian can take all the castles he wants but what's going to ultimately win the war are these two beasts who yeah the the rider can control them to an extent but they have their animals so they'll take out no anyone that's in their way regardless of sides or bent knees or anything so exactly to try to like that's that's one war and then mm-hmm. everyone else is just like oh great <laughs> we're playing a <laughs> game of politics almost yeah. and yeah. and bickering and their own stuff um jace goes and meets the phrase secures them does a very good job um he he ends up still being alive when he returns back to dragonstone thank god mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he managed to ha- have an alliance now. We we kind of hate the phrase, but that's a whole different story. And but it was funny to see them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Again, I you know coming to the coming to the Game of Thrones world, you know, fresh with House of the Dragon. I you know I, I don't know all the lore and, and backstory. I mean, I, you know, just I, I do know that they. Do you have the, the 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 twins and the fries? Do you have a role? I think down down the line with one of the Starks. Um, but uh, but but just watching, just getting to this episode with this and seeing Jace basically be an emissary uh, mm-hmm. for 
um, an unsanctioned emissary at that <laughs> for for Renera uh, and, and pulling pull, pulling this pulling this off um, and, and 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 you know and it was a good use of like statesmanship and and brinksmanship with like he didn't like have to you know he you know it was a good contrast with like his style and and, and Damon's style because if Damon had gone over there to like negotiate he he would have used Craxies as a blunt instrument whereas I think Jace implied the you know look I'm here on a dragon y'all but I, I can let's 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 talk. Let's just you know he did it. He was a very skillful negotiator. So I I really liked the way that he he played his hand there and and uh, was able to get them to to side with 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 Team Black. Um, yeah, well they proved that because we saw Damon yeah. on his dragon, yeah. run blunt force, and then we yeah. to contrast with what Jace was doing. Um, yeah. And and then he furthers becomes an MVP of the episode as he has a conversation with his mom upon his return and they together come to the conclusion that they need more dragons therefore they need more dragon riders um therefore let the hunt begin to those who fell out of the bloodline which we met hugh a few episodes ago and you had already pointed out like there's a potential of him becoming a future dragon rider so we're going to see him again along with potentially a few others because they have at least two dragons that are large enough to take on um vagar who have yet to been claimed so to speak so i thought I, i really liked the way that whole conversation went from like kind of arguing to understanding to mm-hmm. let's look at this a different way um yeah. we we and and I, and just to point out renera like her father going to the histories which yeah. we saw allison attempt to do the previous episode so Viser still lives on <laughs> he does he does his counsel is on i i i have i have like mixed feelings about jace's solution because on the one and and i and i and i and i will tie this to what we saw with the greens did because on the one hand yes it's a brilliant idea and one of the things i really liked about this episode too um that i hadn't really noticed before but in dragonstone there was always the faint sounds of the dragons in the back just to like remind you that you know we have an arsenal of dragons here um and then whenever he does come up with the um with the plan to uh you know to 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 have the bastard targaryen targaryens that are out there be their potential riders i thought that was a great tie-in of course you know we've been and of course with corliss becoming a hand and and then and all the things going with alan and 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 bernice last week just like making having corliss you know she basically forgave him for having the affair and having the bastard child out there so now you know They've been having that back and forth throughout the season about Alan saving Corliss and and all. So, so that's another potential rider because he is, you know, he'll, I guess he even, he, you know, he's Valerian at least. So I guess they can also be dragon riders. So yeah, I, I thought that was a good all good tie-ins there. But Hamlet? where? Hmm? Yeah, yeah. How do we know I, that? Um, they have, I guess, the high because they speak high Valerian. And, yeah, but that doesn't mean that they're. And they do have. Valerian. Yeah, I think like, they. I like, think wait they a have, second, I'm con- I'm confused. That doesn't yeah. mean like they speak high high Valerian. Any anyway, go go ahead. I no, know. I think yeah, I think I think they can, and I might be wrong, and if I am, listeners correct me. Again, I don't, but I thought that they could also be potential dragon riders. Because they have drop of the dragon's blood, you know, whatever gene that, whatever it is that makes the Targaryens, I think they could also have it as well. But the the other point I was thinking of with Jason, in the short term, I think that's good. But in the long term, I think it gets to a, a, a potential miscalculation that that Christian Cole and Hightower had when they were marching melees down the down the street. And that it, it it takes where you know where 
you know, think about the line where where the kid was like, "I thought dragons were gods," and the guy was like, oh, "It's just meat." And I, and I, to that point, it to me is the, I guess, taking away the luster of what's special about the Targaryens, uh, in that you know only you know it, it, it normalizes them to the sense that anybody could be a dragon rider, um, and just how the whole parading melees down the street makes takes the the, the lust the, the invincibility away from from the dragons and that's why you don't like the plan well i just think it's a good it's a good plan it's a good plan but in the short term it's a good plan but in the long term i just wonder like it, you know if 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 we're trying if the if the goal, you know, of Targaryens is to be this mystical, special family that only has a special connection with dragons. And now you're, you're, you're letting um, not pure Targaryens like fly them. Does well, that? Jace does that take a pure Targaryen? Well, and that's the point. I mean, there, and you know, which, you know, I think back to Aemon in the season, season one, where he was like such a strong, all these strong boys here, you know. So, <laughs> so. So you're saying that it would it would be better if it was only pure Targaryens? For the for the appearance of the 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 regality of Targaryens and even you know why and that's part of the reason why they intermarry so much, just because they want to have that pure Targaryen line. Right, right, right. Uh that's all, I'm not saying I mean I'm just I'm just putting that out there as a thought. I'm not saying that's as as a potential downside of Jason's plan. No, I'm not saying that's what I believe, but I think it's it could well, be. It's more of a criticism of his plan. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. what we do here. Yeah. yeah. No. 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 You're you're right. I just am thrown off by it. I I wasn't yeah. expecting that, and I was like, I don't I don't really know. But um, okay. So so is that it for Team Black? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, I know there was Bela with the uh, later she was up in the in the, the mountains ear. with the hills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was that uh, scary. She had one scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one scene. They're like, funny. She's like, you know, I wanted dragons. Like, you got dragons. <laughs> you didn't tell me what size you wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we still have to cover the boys. <laughs> um, Team Green. So, Sir Christian. I'm just gonna start off with him because he he is like the most frustrating character I'm watching on TV right now because at the start of this episode, complete idiot doesn't understand why people are upset that they won and are parading around a dragon head in King's landing. But then by the end of the episode, when he's talking about talking to Allison about why he did not support her trying to become the regent in Aegon's stead, he makes an excellent point. Like, it's like, dude, you you actually did understand something out of all of this. That, yes, even though he knows what Aemon did, it doesn't matter. Aemon is a dragon rider. And he controls their largest dragon. And is a very tactical military person. So that's who you want in charge right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. You were not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And 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 Laris, you know, the snake that he is makes the good point too in the council there where I mean it does undermine the whole reason why they're like, wait a minute, if we put you in charge, then why are we fighting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He um if he if they put Allison in charge. Al- Allison in charge, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and they were like, and, and Strong was like, no. I mean, that's that just undermines our whole cause here. Yeah. What are what are some of your takeaways about Team Green? Yeah, I mean, those were those were the, obviously the, the 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 two. Of course, it, it touched on the miscalculation that uh, Cole had in, in parading the dragon head down the street, and uh, how that can you know, really uh, undermines that the mystique of the dragons and. Um, you know, which I think it could also come into play as far as um, also the other cal- miscalculation that that Amund has in, in locking down the city um, and right. not and um, 
because people are so desperate. You know, the place was already blockade from getting additional supplies and stuff at the beginning of the war effort. And, you know, that was one thing, at least, you know, Aegon had, he had his fault, faults and flaws, but I think he did recognize, which a- Amund and Cole and others do not recognize, is that, you know, we, we need to small, keep the small folk happy and we need to make sure we provide provision for them. Um, and and so, you know, so that was definitely, this. you know, so you're right. Amon clearly is a, from a tactical standpoint, he, he he is the right person to be the regent to lead the war effort. But as far as having the wisdom and, and bigger picture of like seeing things from a you know, 360 view, he, 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 he's not equipped to do so. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, getting back to the council scene and, and just one of the things I, I thought of, I thought of you and one of the uh, things you had mentioned earlier this season about Alicent and Renera not having uh, scenes together. But what really struck me with this episode too was the, they were the, tr- the two anchors of, of the story here and, and just sort of how circumstances and people around them and how their reactions to it um or how 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 it all unfolded uh you know we've touched on the sexism and, and stuff and we saw it in both in both chambers as far as how the men were but also just the the what one of the things we talked about in the past and we saw it again in this episode is their their approach as as mothers and 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 you know when Alicent was there with Aegon in the in the chamber at the end there and kept trying to comfort him um it was, you know, she, she versus Renera and her dealing with her kids and uh, approach with like whenever Jace gave her the good advice and stuff. Um, well, if, if to it's it, something and versus that, Allison didn't, you know, she just called, you know, Aegon a, you know, an idiot loser. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. that people have pointed out is. Or posed a question of does Allison hate her children? Mm-hmm. And and I think that I don't know if there's hate because she definitely cares for them, mm-hmm. but there is some despisement. And there's there's also just have I created a monster? Yeah. And and their actions, I think it's more about the actions, um, where that they've pursued and who they've become like Mm -hmm. i know that there's a maternal love there and bond i mean she wanted to take out luke's eye when when she found out about aemon um she she's had a lot of protection and she she's the one who put Aegon on the on the throne um but since then and everything that has transpired there is a lot of guilt and mm-hmm. there's a lot of shame. And also every single time one of her boys fucks up, she's like, I fucked up as mom. I fucked up as a queen. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so, so there, there's a lot there where Renera doesn't have that, that much where she, she's grieved. Well, she's still grieving Luke probably. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We don't see that as much. We haven't really seen that since the first episode. But I don't know. There's not as much regret when it comes yeah. to Renera and her children. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But, all right. Well, that is it for House of Dragon. Let's move on to talk. The Boys, Episode 7, The Insider, with Ryan and Vought Studios. Christmas special, Avenue V, telling people to report on their own parents if they think that soups are bad. Yeah. Yeah, the puppets the puppets that we first saw in Doom Patrol, and we saw Gen V, and now the boys have returned. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. but, uh, yeah, but uh, I... The, the 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 whole the whole song. I mean, again, we we've talked about 
the boys and how they I mean, how on the nose they are are this season and they were like really really on the nose with with, with the start of this episode with the whole see something say something and and but I what the thing that I liked about the the the, the opening was we really started you know we saw some of ryan's discomfort um as that all was going on and, and you know and, and which you know definitely get to pay off later later in the episode from that um you know all the, you know, with you know, the, those those elements of becca that uh, homelander has not been able to uh to, to exercise you know get out of him so that that was that you know that was really the, the thing that really stood out with me with with that that whole sequence there at the beginning yeah, yeah. He Ryan just basically reminded um, Homelander on national television that he actually grew up with a mom. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike Homelander, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he got a break. So he can suck on uh, firecrackers' tits all he wants. He still doesn't have a mommy. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Never has ever experienced motherly love. <laughs> which, yeah, I just I I liked the the song and then then like the third line they brought up a groomer and i'm like whoa wait a second <laughs> what's happening here <laughs> it's not like a typo i don't think they know what they're saying because we're talking about something very different than yeah. just people who don't like soups but whatever whatever, whatever. Yeah. see something say something um and ryan certainly did which i was glad because um we we They've been doing a good job utilizing Ryan and not being too much mm-hmm. um, and just enough. And then we also, um, as it aired, Butcher got to see it, um, yeah. which proved his point to Kessler that Ryan is worth saving despite yeah. Homelander's innocence. Granted, he then faints. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah. And Kessler's very happy. But... You know, now that we know Kessler isn't real, mm-hmm. <laughs> and now that this is happening, I just I feel like why I've been so anti the boys side of these episodes is mm-hmm. Butcher is so removed, yeah, and is on this own thing, and it just. Oh, it's annoying. It just, I mean, this episode, it's a very good penultimate episode. It brings a lot of things together. You, yeah. you, it's clear final episode setup, very well done. Doesn't give too much, but it also sets the stage for the finale. Yeah. Really executed well. At the same time, like I could fast forward through every Butcher Kessler scene and still know what was going on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, yeah, I mean, once, yeah, once we, you're right. I mean, I think that what, where, where it, it did pay off though with Butcher, and to your point about him being removed, was, you know, following up on MM's panic attack from last week's episode to, you know, to bring a Butcher back into the boys and, and being a leader because despite everything, he he is the he is the appropriate person who should be leading this group. Yeah, yeah. He he. It's his group, and I find it funny that they put Mother's Milk in charge, and then he just faints, and then is like, "I'm out." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that there's another thing. And trust me, as somebody who has has anxiety and has had a few anxiety attacks, like I get it. But at the same time. The way that it is edited in the season and it plays out, it's still kind of like, really, really, you're yeah. gonna that, like, yeah. go. Let's rewind a few episodes when you were just telling Butcher to shut the fuck up and that he yeah. is out of his mind and crazy. Let's just rewind that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's you know, I know I actually heard Laz Alonzo who plays Mother's Milk. Uh, he, I was watching the, uh, I was watching the review with the uh, the Midnight Boys on Ringer. Mm-hmm. And so Van Latham is uh, is friends with Lies, and so Lies like they called him actually during the podcast and like hey, uh, tell you know they're talking about mother's milk and you know and one of the things they talked about was uh, his his clear you know, weight loss this season 
and um and part of that you know part of the um thing was i think it was a decision that i think lies and eric kripke like but the weight loss was like just showing how him it was a physical manifestation of like him being the leader of the boys this year so that's why they they worked the, they worked the the, the change the physical changes into into the show to rep that's, to show that's that cool. that's cool um yeah. what what we also got going on is um the continuation of samir and we finally get a reason for frenchy to be in an episode as yeah. um butcher's first call of action is getting frenchy out of jail randomly <laughs> <laughs> he's in he's out he's in he's out yeah. and immediately putting him in charge of helping samir replicate the virus um so that they can use it on homelander and the vp well and and you know it's funny like frenchy works when he's with kamiko yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and he can't really dominate an episode. He just has to be be in it just enough because both of them, and honestly, Kamiko too, both mm-hmm. of them have a very good moment, and it kind of ties into what they've each been dealing with very mm-hmm. annoyingly this season, like yeah. her own guilt for when she was being brought up and killing other girls um, for survival. And then him and his whole, I murdered these these families and innocent blood on my heads, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So so it's them having, trying to figure out not just how to forgive themselves, but just how to, well, or maybe to how to forgive themselves. I don't really know. But yeah. Had well, very- I guess, yeah, forget, forgive themselves, but also, I guess, reconnect, I guess, too. Um, in the process of forgiving themselves, because I guess they have been estranged all season because of Frenchie's guilt and Kimiko dealing with the things that she's been dealing with as far as whatever stuff in her past. Yeah, it was definitely Frenchie. You put that wedge in between them, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Clearly. For some reason. I I still don't. I'm still not tracking exactly what happened with them between the seasons, but whatever. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't buying it, but I'm glad they, they did finally get they finally closed that story arc because to me that's and i think most people would agree that's probably the weakest arc of the season yeah and then they uh they really close it with samir finishing the virus Mm -hmm. them being like okay you're free to go him immediately injecting it to kamiko and um and kamiko another uh, why why always the leg like Samir gets his leg chopped off, and now Kamiko <laughs> got hers chopped off. Like, what is with this virus? And as long as they're stabbed in the leg, you just chop it off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like it's just <laughs> funny. And I know Samir's not technically a soup, but, yeah. but so so they they had that moment, and now with that infected leg, Frenchie's going to replicate the virus. Yeah just in time for the the assassination attempt which is just yeah. weird how considering what happened this weekend for the yeah. boy to be ending with an assassination attempt yeah it hits it, it uh, yeah it, this episode <laughs> i watched it friday before the events of saturday and it but now afterwards i know we talked the pre-show it does hit different <laughs> on that. took a little wind out of the sails for, for me to be honest <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it it was a lot um yeah. well but that's not the only cliffhanger because the real one has to do with annie and um very very well played i did not get it i did not understand or foresee this happening but um at the beginning of the episode we're shown that or we are we are informed along with annie that huey kept the suit yep (laughs) (laughs) and um and that that scene is very early on in the episode to the point where you almost forget about it Mm -hmm. and then they are off to um, find out what Sage is doing, and they encounter a shape shifter. Mm-hmm. But again, for me at least, very forgettable. 
And by the end of the episode, you are you were shown that Annie put on the suit. And what is the first thing you do when you put on a suit? You immediately have sex with your boyfriend. Yeah. And that's what happens. But then we realize that it wasn't Annie. It was the shape shifter. And we are shown that Annie is locked in a, what appears to be a dungeon, a well of some sort. A, yeah. a place where very potentially cannot escape. So, so I... Um, like I said, I thought that the way they did that with all the scenes, I didn't even, I mean, they flash back to what happened because you see the dead woman's body who the shape sister pretended to be at the bar, but I didn't put that together. They had to physically show me that because I was too distracted by Annie and Butcher having a scene together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, that worked. I have to say, they 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 got me too with the whole shapeshifter and 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 also not only does the first not only does the shapeshifter like you know take their physical characteristics on, but they also what's so diabolical about it is they also get their memories and stuff too because she knew how to like you know go into the safe and and get the get the evidence that they have against Newman and and Homelander and stuff. And so um, which was just yeah, I mean that was just like, yeah, that was well, well played, well played, boys. Yeah, and th- now you're just left to wonder who is the shapeshifter working for? Because it is, is was yeah. Homelander in on the shapeshifter? Because Homelander fired Sage in this episode. Put her here to the core cave or to the curb. I can't yeah, talk to, right now. To the to, to, to her slummy apartment, <laughs> her messy apartment. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. So, which, yeah. what, what are your thoughts about Sage Homelander Fallout? Yeah, that was, um, so that was one where we we talked about how long that alliance is going to last, and and um, you know how she tried to cover it, especially whenever. Uh, she was just saying that it was her was it her misinformation or plant or something like that as far as wh- why she didn't tell Homelander her, her you know the plan for it. It just I don't know it was, it was something about it. This is the smartest person in the world. I, I don't know. Maybe it was while she was partially lobotomized that she just didn't think all these angles through. Um, to, to, to knowing knowing the, the type of individual that Homelander is, especially when she's seen him like you know laser laser uh, an assistant um, down whenever. But it is interesting he didn't kill her. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, he didn't kill her, even though Firecracker would have been totally on board with that. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, he was like, yeah. Like. So I guess he still sees some value. I don't know. Yeah. I don't I don't know why, but I, yeah. I think that it's just um, it's a it's something to keep in mind that yeah. everyone else who he falls out with, like they immediately die, um, yeah. not her. So even though so it was more like I'm mad at you rather yeah. than than you betrayed me um, because she hasn't yet. What? But now she, yeah. she's pissed. And think- um yeah. Do you think it has something to do with? Because I know she was whenever she got fired, and she went up to him and said something to the. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but um, something to affect just one person out there who's you know more dangerous. I don't know. Do you think that, that that could stop him? Do you think that he took that as like she may have something on him, or she was thinking about if he was thinking about Ryan or, or Soldier Boy, or I don't I don't know. I was just trying to well, figure she's out. Well, she's she's the smartest person in the world, so yeah. she she knows more than than anyone else about everyone. So yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if there's something that both of them are aware of, or that she has figured out about the way he works that no one else has so yeah. i don't i guess what i'm trying to say is i don't know if it's like she has something on him because again he could just kill her like yeah he yeah. does with anybody else who has something like wh- i so i don't know if it's necessarily that but it's more of her saying like oh you're gonna remove me so now you're gonna take on this other thing 
or this other person who's more yeah. more powerful and who can actually stop you um, without me. Good luck with that. Good yeah, luck yeah. with that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so it, was, it was more of her trying to one up um, his firing of her, which yeah. which is it, immediately. It well, well, it, it works, but it doesn't work because. Yeah. <laughs> he, he kind of realizes that firecracker is good for one thing in this episode too um yeah. as she brings in web weaver but but what i really want to talk about in terms of sage is um is how it led to one of the most infamous lines in the boys history and it's a quote from a tv show <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I can't never was not on my bingo card. Sometimes the way you get them is the way you lose them. A classic Lisa Vanderpump quote, technically not said during season 10, not said during <laughs> season 10. Just going to put that out there. It was actually the season before that she said that about somebody else. So it okay. was not about Scandival. Okay. Um, so it's just, it's so funny that, that, the deep says that, um, well, not the deep, the octopus says that as the deep and the octopus um, are are breaking up. And and what does the deep do? He he kills he kills the bitch. Yep. Um, and it, and very, very bizarre scene. But what we expect nothing less from the deep, especially mm -hmm. when it involves his sexuality. And so as after Sage gets fired, she's leaving and she comes across Black Noir in the deep and <laughs> and then the deep <laughs> they immediately <laughs> tries it on her. And then you, we're, it's sort of like, I don't know, Will, you have to tell me yeah. like so it's implied yeah. basically that. Black Noir was also hooking up with. Oh yeah, it wasn't a plot. It was like it was flat out. It was. Okay. It was yeah. It was like yeah. as soon as I saw yeah, and the, and not only that, but she didn't know, have him lobotomize her. Yeah, that was what was implied. Like, what is the yeah. lobotomy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was when I saw I was so I was uh, I was on the floor with that. That was just like yeah. wow, yeah. It was great, especially yeah. to come off of those two showing up at the boys' hideout because mm -hmm. Homelander is like, we got to we gotta kill the boys and get rid of Butcher's team once and for all, have yep. a good action sequence, which yep. during with A-Train shows up, um, unfortunately, and his secret is now out that the insider is the A-Train and... Mm -hmm. Now, another scene that I need you to give me what your read on is, is yeah. the scene between him and Ashley. Okay. So the scene is that he, after the encounter, after basically sh exposing himself to Black Noir and the Deep, mm -hmm. he runs back to Vought Tower and tells Ashley the secret's out. We got to go. What was with the sexual tension that I never seen? <laughs> okay, so I thought it was just me. No, that okay. was such a weird. It was, was uncomfortable weird... in a weird way. <laughs> it was. It was. I there was that undercurrent there for sure, and I was just like, this is this is just too this is just too weird. <laughs> it's just out of left field because it was. they have never liked each other. They there has yeah. never been that. And he he gets exposed. They like, even their even their alliance. You yeah. they have one moment, one a few moments, but it's never like they're very adversarial. Enemy yeah. of my enemy is my friend. Yeah. And then this moment felt as though they were in a romantic relationship, and he went to save her, and she decided to stay, and he left. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. What? But it made enough impression that she's like, don't forget to take out the chip. <laughs> exactly. That, thank you. That was another part. I'm just like, oh, just just added on my confusion. Yeah. What is happening? Yeah, because <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get why she said that, because regardless, they are clearly friends. But and so he's she's trying to say, like, 
you leave, I'm going to try to protect you, but this is the only thing I can do at this point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm glad it was, it was not just me who read okay. sexual undertone. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I was just like, gross. Yeah, it was but even like even when it, even and, and I think what confirmed it for me was like even within the scene they both agree they, they also had the reaction like gross because it was the the tension the sexual tension was there it was there's no de- there's no denying it in a yeah. gross way yeah 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 um but not as gross as Homelander and Web Weaver so oh God, not yeah. what I want to talk about. Yeah, that's, that's all we need to say about that. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nope. yeah. 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 Definitely did not need that. Um, anything else about the boys uh, insider penultimate episode? No, I I I think we I mean other other only other point I will say about Deep is he's he's definitely gone full homelander. I mean he's he's you know, with with uh taking them out and that other line that stuck out to me. It's like I'll kill all kill all the fish in the sea for you. I mean he's 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 all in. But um, but yeah, it was it was a good like you said it was a very good penultimate. Um, you know, this season has been on the news uh, with with uh, all the. I mean, that shows always have political overtones and stuff and and all. But uh, but uh, I I was for penultimates. I I was like okay, this I was I was I came away satisfied with this episode. Yeah yeah I I've been kind of on the lower hype train of the boys this season but i will have to say i think this is one of their stronger episodes of the season it was done very well done and i think just as a penultimate episode as a whole i i appreciate these types of penultimates um where i still feel like there's there's more to give in the finale they haven't wrapped up too much but at the same time, they've brought enough together to be like, okay, the the finale is being set up to be very satisfactory. Um, I will still fast forward through butcher scenes if he's just talking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not just him talking to himself. I, I think I brought this up last week. It's more that I don't, I'm not seeing the growth. I feel like we've been down this road with Butcher for a few seasons now, and I feel like we're just going in circles at this point. So, and that's yeah. what irritates me. I'm yeah. all for people talking to imaginary friends, like yeah. all, especially when played by a, a Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Come on. Yeah, I'll take. I I agree with you to a point. I do think there is growth in that the Butcher of two seasons ago or so, or so would would not he would have been like kessler and would have taken ryan out whereas now he did he, he did we did get that payoff there uh with maybe with him maybe. yeah but his but, true son is huey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um all right on that note will why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you yes you can find me on x formerly known as twitter at will and polk w-i-l-l-m-p-o-l-k and you can find me there too at SJ Belmont, S J B L M O N T. Please follow our crew on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Seen and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Seen underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.seenandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>